What's up, everybody? Let's talk Jets Radio. Quick video here. Uh, reminder, we'll be back live tonight, 8 o'clock, taking calls, bringing people on. Should be an interesting show, considering all the news uh, over the last couple days. Usually, this is a little bit more of a quiet time of year. Jets, obviously, in full swing right now, trying to find their offensive coordinator, as well as a quarterback. Uh, interviews have already been granted with Joe Brady, uh, with Gary Kubiak's son, Nathaniel Hackett. Some people think that uh, Kevin Petullo, he could potentially emerge as a favorite with his ties to the organization, but really not that favorite candidate, you know, at least not a, a consensus guy that everybody seems to want. There's really not that that quarterback whisperer, offensive guru. Um, and again, you have a head coach that's also on the hot seat. Does that limit your search in some ways? They already missed out on guys like Bevel and, and Callahan who didn't want to come here. So it, it's going to be interesting to see who they ultimately land on and, and what their plan is for a quarterback and whether or not they could ultimately tie those two things together with an offensive coordinator who runs a system that matches the quarterback or at the very least can adapt to what his quarterback does well. So that brings me, of course, to the news today, which is, you know, the Packers are not only open to trading Aaron Rodgers. Apparently, I guess it might take two first round picks. According to Peter King, Woody Johnson would be willing to meet that price. Now, again, is this a decision that's going to be Woody Johnson's or is it Joe Douglas's to make? That's a whole nother conversation. Uh, but at least for me, you know, just hearing that the Packers want to trade him out of the NFC, why the hell not? You know, it, for, for everyone that's trying to sell me on guys like Derek Carr and Garoppolo, guys that I, I do think help the Jets, they're, they're clearly better than what the Jets have had. They clearly make the Jets a playoff team, assuming that the defense doesn't, you know, take two or three steps backwards next year. You're, you're probably looking at, you know, let's just say Derek Carr is the quarterback of the Jets for the next four or five years. You're probably looking at making the playoffs a couple years, maybe even winning a playoff game. But what is the ceiling beyond that? When, when you look around the AFC right now at, at all the, the young quarterbacks that are building with head coaches, building continuity with, uh, with their receivers, and getting better year after year while the Jets are trying to play catch-up, where does Derek Carr put the Jets? Where, where does Jimmy G put the Jets, right? And because it's been so long since we've made the playoffs, like, I, I get it. Some people think, you know, like, I'm, I'm spoiled or I'm being too greedy, you know, because I want a championship. But ultimately, when you spend this amount of time rebuilding your team, going through how many different rebu uh, rebuilds with how many different GMs, how many different quarterbacks, like, the, the thought process was that once you ultimately got it right, you were going to have a, a, a consistent winner, that was going to be there year after year with a chance to win, like to, to win something serious. So like the, the bar is so low that it just seems like we're okay. At least some people are okay. Giving $40 million uh, per year to a quarterback. That's good. That improves the jets, but still probably doesn't put them in that championship conversation. And like, to me, that's just not worth it. it it's just not worth it. You know, you want to make the playoffs. Cool. Like, you know, we haven't been there in a while. It, it, it'll be fun. To make it, it'll be fun to you know be a part of a playoff game. I, I I get all that. Ultimately, I want to win a championship. All these years of losing to me was supposed to result in something. At the very end of it, whenever it happened, however long it took, it was supposed to result in something that was going to be special. A, a young core of talented players, and because you already missed on the the number two pick and your quarterback, you don't really have a choice now. Your head coach is on the hot seat. Your GM might be on the hot seat too. You need to get a quarterback who gives you the best chance to win right now. Derek Carr is not that. Aaron Rodgers potentially is that. 39 years old, his play's gone down a little bit the last couple of years. Uh, I, I fully understand all of that. He's still a Hall of Fame quarterback, one of the best to ever do it. I'll take my chances on him potentially having another year or two left, assuming that this defense is just going to be close to what it was last year. You know, let's have a, a top 15 defense with Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball to Garrett Wilson. Maybe you make another trade for another playmaker. You get a healthy Brees Hall and AVT back. That's a lot more than he was working with with the Packers. That's for damn sure. You know, I, I know prior to that, he had Devontae Adams. Maybe Garrett Wilson, you know, can can be somewhat of, you know, that that Devontae Adams just as far as that number one feature receiver that he can trust and, and, and feature throughout games. But, you know, I, I just can't imagine being a fan right now and looking at Aaron Rodgers being available and just saying, ah, thanks, but no thanks. Like, what? Like, what? Again, the price tag, whatever it is, two first-round picks, it, it doesn't matter to me. We, we've missed on so many draft picks. We've spent so much money on players to come here and just be average. Why not swing for the fences for once? Right? We, we were sold the, the last three off-seasons with all, with all these free agents— we were sold that they were good value, 
that they kept cap flexibility, and that they were ultimately going to lead to all these great things, change the locker room, change the culture, bring leadership. How much of that stuff has really happened? How much is Jordan Whitehead and C.J. Uzama and Lincoln Tomlinson and George Fant and Connor McGovern and all these guys that we've thrown big money to, Conklin, Corey Davis, Carl Lawson, how much have they really changed the New York Jets? I, I get it. Things are slowly starting to turn. We're becoming a respectable team. But guess what? They also lost six in a row down the stretch. They completely collapsed. And right now, to me, they're not even close to the top five or six teams in the AFC, simply because of what those teams can offer at quarterback and what we don't have at quarterback right now. So yeah, you plug in a, a solid veteran there, you're probably a playoff team. We'll have some fun next year, the next couple of years. That's cool. I want somebody that gives me a chance to win a Super Bowl. To me, that's Aaron Rodgers. To me, that's Lamar Jackson. If it takes two first round picks to get either of those guys, the, the cap space shouldn't even matter. And I know the Jets don't really have a lot of money this year. They've got over $100 million in space next year. You can find a way to bring in your quarterback and extend Quinn and Williams with the amount of money that they have next year and into future years. Not a lot of these contracts are guaranteed beyond next year. So you want to go get Aaron Rodgers? You want to extend Quinn and Williams? You could still do that. Find a way to make it happen. Get your elite quarterback in here. You have a, a nice young core of players from last year's draft that still have three years left on their rookie contracts. Sauce and Brees... And, uh, and Garrett Wilson, you could even pick up their fifth-year option. So you could have four years of control with a, a young core of talented players not making a lot of money. So why not trade two first-round picks, give Rodgers 50 or $60 million a year, whatever's left on his contract that the, that the team would have to pick up? Why not do it? Why not the Jets? Why not now? What are we waiting for? I'm tired of average. I'm tired of mediocre. I'm tired of you know seven, eight, nine wins being the, the ceiling for this team. I want the ceiling to be a legitimate championship. Aaron Rodgers for two years with a good defense and some playmakers, he would give you that. Go make it happen.